Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, can we just put our hands together? Come on, can we just begin to worship God? Thank the Lord that he allowed us to make it to Wednesday. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our scripture is going to be coming from Psalms 91. We want to welcome our Facebook family. We thank you for joining us. We welcome our in-person family. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that fled, flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys the midday. A thousand may fall at one side, 10,000 at your right side, but he will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If I say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No di disaster will come nor near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you all your ways. They will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your feet against the stone. You will tread on the, on the lion and the cobra and will trample the great lion and the serp, serp, serpent. Because he loves you, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledged my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. That whole scripture let us know that God got us. Amen. He's going to cover us if we trust him. If we believe him, if we just lean on him, he will cover us. Amen. I read Psalms 91 in its entirety, and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Come 
on how great is our God. How many know we serve a great God? How many know we serve a great God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we come to you first saying thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you just for being God and God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to make it into the house of the Lord one more time, Lord. And we just give you glory. We just give you honor. And we just give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for being an on-time God, a forgiving God, a way-making God. We thank you, Lord God, for our health. We thank you for our strength, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a way-maker, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, just to continue to cover us, Lord God. We thank you that we're able to come into the house of the Lord and just give you glory and give you honor one more time, Lord God. We thank you for who you are, Lord God, and ask you, Lord God, just to continue to show yourself strong in our life, Lord God. We thank you for your protection, Lord God, dangers seen and unseen. You continue to cover us, Lord God, and we don't take it for granted. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience, God, and ask your Lord God to continue, Lord God, to move in our life, Lord. Touch our pastor, God. Continue to give him a word. Continue to move in him, Lord God. We thank you for the leadership that you've placed over this church, Lord God. Continue to have your way in his life, Lord God. Continue to speak to him, Lord God. Continue to give him wisdom and knowledge, God. Lord, we just say thank you. We thank you for everyone who came out tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for their obedience, Lord God, for their sacrifice, Lord, and we just thank you, and we praise you, and we love you, and all these blessings we ask you in your darling in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will sing how great, how great is our God, how great.
Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Is he big enough? Come on, we don't want to box him in. He's been doing big things since the world began. Sometimes I don't understand why, but he's big enough. You're big enough, Jesus. We bless the Lord and we thank him once again for his grace, his mercy. We want to say welcome to all of our family in person, as well as those family members who are watching via live stream. We honor the Lord for you today. We are grateful because he's given us another opportunity, another chance, another time to come before his presence with singing. So we bless God and we honor him for all the many things that he continues to do. Come on, y'all. We're not worth worthy of all of the things that God does for us so consistently, so faithfully amen if we ain't careful we'll begin to take that thing for granted so we honor the lord and we thank him for all the many ways he makes for us for all the many times he heals us and keeps us so we bless him and we thank him for another opportunity so we welcome you we thank you for tuning in with us via live stream we honor the lord for your presence and we ask that you would just do us one tiny favor if you'll reach to the bottom of your page and press your share button Amen. We want you to be interactive with us. Comment, like emojis, hand clapping emojis, however the Lord sees fit and blesses your heart. We check it and we want to see your presence on line. So we thank God and we honor him and we thank you once again for your attentiveness. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Come on, let's go to the word. Let's go to God in prayer before we jump right into the word. <clears throat> Most holy, our wise, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. Lord, we thank you once again for your grace, your mercy, your sovereign will, and your ability to love us beyond our wildest dreams. God, we honor you tonight. We come before you tonight with bowed down head and humble hearts, asking, oh God, that you would feed us more manna from on high that will strengthen our resolve, give us persevering power that will continue to move forward in the path in the pilgrimage that you have planned for our purpose. God, we honor you tonight. We're grateful for you, O oh God, for keeping us. God, you woke us this morning clothed and in our right mind. You've given us enormous amount of health and strength, O oh God. You continue to be better to us than we'd ever been to ourselves. So here we are, O oh God, in the middle of a work week, God, on hump day, God, we pause and Stop through the ebb and flow of life to hear a word from you. Now speak, oh God. Your servants are listening. We need clarity for our assignment. We need encouragement as life beats us down, God. We need to hear a word that will strengthen us and give us resolve. We need to continue to run on to see what the end is going to be. I've studied, I've tried, but I'm in dire need of your help. Let no flaws, faults, or failures in me. Hinder the free-flowing movement of your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, please don't penalize your people for anything in me that is not like you. Let the words of my mouth 
the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, we thank you. We honor you. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on, will y'all just help me give God a hand clap of praise? Just one, one of those, you being good, God praises. Amen. He has kept us and continues to be uh, better to us than we could be to ourselves. We want to continue, amen, and uh, looking at our theme of the month, which is Women, Her Story Month. We know it's Women History Month, but we're calling it Women, Her Story Month because we're looking at the awesome women of the Bible to which God has lifted up and lined out for our consideration. So we're going to take a peek around from the eyes of the queens and see what thus saith the Lord. I pray that so far you've been blessed with uh, Sister Shifrin Pua, who had a risky faith, and Sister Jochebed, amen, who didn't let the outside circumstances keep her from proceeding with the plan of God. As a matter of fact, God's voice was so strong in her life that she uh, did not do what the government said do. She did what thus saith the Lord, and as a result, we have been given, amen, the prophet Moses to lead God's people. So we thank you for all of these mighty women. We remember Deborah. Amen. Deborah stepped up and stepped out on faith and trusted God. And as a result of her trusting, it was a young lady paying attention that was inspired by Deborah's walk. Her name was Jael, and she had the tent pig ministry, and she allowed God to use her in a marvelous way. And as a result, she helped the children of Israel escape. Amen. Because God used her even though her job title was not that significant. And then last week, amen, Sunday, if you wasn't here, we, we dealt with the widow, amen, the young lady who, who, who didn't have much. And when you, when you have nothing, amen, you got to know that God is up to something. And she had just a little cruise of oil. The Bible says that she, she trusted God with that oil. And as a result, God multiplied and blessed her, her life. So this is just a few, few of the women we've looked at thus far tonight. I want to go look at another group of women. You'll find them in the Luke Can chapter of your Bible, the Luke Ann Gospel, 8th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Luke chapter 8. Amen. Just three verses is what I want to consider. Lift up and line out tonight for your consideration. Amen. When you get your Bible, your app, amen. We want you to turn into the 8th chapter of Luke. Amen. And see what thus saith the Lord. Y'all know how we do it, God's will. Here we stand in reverence. Amen. To the word of God. We stand out of respect for God. Amen. We, the Bible says in Ezra, they stood from sundown to sun up. Amen. In the reading of the word of God. I think we can stand for three verses. Luke chapter 8, uh, New King James Version of the printed text. When you find these verses, you'll find these these words. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Harris Stewart, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. You may be seated in the presence of God. It says, and many others, many other women who provided for him from their substance. Amen. And just for a few moments, I'm going to talk from this topic, y'all. Receiving leads to giving. Receiving leads to giving. Now, would that you would flank me with your prayers and your amens. Receiving leads to giving. So if you don't remember nothing else Pastor says, he, he wants you to understand that because we've received so much, we shouldn't have a problem giving as much. One more time. Since we received so much, we shouldn't have a problem giving as much. So we're going to look at receiving leads 
to giving. I would that you would flank me with your prayers and your amen. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. And at the core of the ministry of the master was love. His foundational principle, what he built his ministry on was love. And his love was so intoxicating that every situation the master found himself in, he searched for a way to give. Y'all remember John tried to tell us in 3 and 16, he says, for he loved us so much, for God so loved the world that he, he gave. He said, for, for God, the cosmological, the, 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 the theological, he, he so loved the, the world, which is the cosmological, that he gave his only begotten son, which is the Christological, that we may have a right to the tree of life, which is the soteriological. So, so God encompassed all his ministry in one verse. He loved us so much that he gave us the best that he had. And listen, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to be the best singer. You don't have to be the best preacher. You don't have to be the best musician, the best deacon, the best usher. But at least you ought to be guilty of being faithful. I mean, if you can't do nothing else for God, at least our lives should show that, Lord, no matter what kind of shortcomings I got, I'm going to do my best to be, because it don't cost nothing to be faithful to God. It, it don't cost nothing to spread a little bit of love. And listen, because you've received so much from God, he wants us to give in our time, in our talent, and in our treasure. See, see, we often think about giving, we go straight to the treasure, and we say, I don't have anything tangible to give. Well, well I, I found out about God is when I didn't have the tangible, I had the time and the talent. So I gave God the best that I had for the time. And guess what happened, y'all? One day he began to bless my life because faithfulness has always been at the top of my priority list to God. I always want God to know if you can't think, trust, nothing else coming from that boy, he sure gonna be faithful. So when I didn't have the tithe, I had the time and I had the talent. So I gave God whatever it was that the house of God needed, whatever the need met. I found ways to show God, to prove to God that you can trust me and one day he started to bless my tithe because I start to give the little I had and little becomes much when you put it in the hands of the master and remember you can give without loving but you can't love without, without, without giving so if we say we love God why is it such a struggle for us to give. Okay, uh, one of the best places to see what Jesus thought of women, women, her, her story month, and we're looking at Jesus and, and his ministry, how his ministry was so full of love, it, it had a gravitational pull, and everybody that, that, that wanted to, that, that wanted to get close to Christ and learn about Christ, his love for them pulled them closer than they probably intended when they first Salt Christ. Come on, are you in here right now? Because you, you, you heard about Christ. Grandmama and them taught you about Christ. And then you messed around and found out for yourself. Life started doing stuff to you. And the more you found out about Christ, they had a gravitational pull on your life. And he pulled you closer and closer. And listen, one of the best places to see Jesus' pull and his thought on women and how he treated women is in the very book Luke, y'all, of all the four Gospels, Luke says the most about Jesus' interaction with women. There are more women in the Gospel of Luke than there are in any of the other Gospels. So I think it would be advantageous for us to look at Luke's perspective. Remember, Luke is a doctor. Luke, Luke is, a, is, a, is a doctor, so he has a very strategic and, and, and detailed approach on the things that he's trying to portray or trying to portray for God's people. And if you look through Luke, you'll see different stories about women and how God was connected to women. If you get down there in around 10 and 38, you'll find out about uh, the home of Mary and Martha of Bethany. And it has special importance with Jesus because when Jesus would travel, one of the places that he would stay was with Mary and Martha in their home. I remember they got into that argument because Mary wanted to worship and Martha wanted to work and they had a problem worshiping and working. And Mary, y'all read about it, 1038, Luke 1038, it's a story about two women, 
Jesus had a fondness for this family, so fond that when their brother died, Lazarus, they called Jesus. And Jesus waited past the time because he was trying to teach the women and the people paying attention that he was the resurrection and death couldn't come unless he allowed it. So, so that, that's Mary chapter, uh, uh, Luke chapter 10, that's about Mary and Martha. When you see Jesus uh, led to trial, the only recorded expression of sorrow, y'all, of any mourning was the women who followed Jesus. That's Luke 23. Still in Luke 23, it was the women who stayed at the cross. Remember, it was only the women and John, all the other disciples, those who said they love him, found it to be a bit dangerous to hang out with Jesus as he's being crucified. Why? Because eventually they thought they had next. So they deserted him. They left him for the dead. But these women were standing at the foot of the cross and they wanted to make sure that they paid homage and respect to their master. Watch this. Because it was the women who bought the spices. Remember, they wanted to bury Jesus with some sense of respect after Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus got him down off the cross. The women was there with the bomb and the spices the very next day because it was Sabbath. They couldn't work on that day. They had to wait until the wee hours. Y'all know the text in Luke 23. They show up and the angel is there and they said, who gonna roll away the stone? They didn't know God was gonna roll away the stone because it wasn't an outside job. It was an inside job. But the women, out of respect for the culture, they ran back and they preached the first sermon. They said, he is Risen. But the men didn't believe in the women. They didn't, they didn't trust the women, so they had to go see for themselves. That's Luke 23. Y'all got to read that when you get home. It was the women who were present and uh, the, the first news of the resurrection was given. Remember, after he arose, he came back and met. There were women there. All I'm trying to get you to see is all throughout Luke, y'all. There's an emphasis put on women. It was Luke who recorded Mary's genealogy in chapter 3. And twice Luke describes women as having come with Jesus from Galilee. What made this strange, y'all, was rabbis didn't hang out with women. So Jesus is radical enough. Jesus is confrontational enough. I told you, his ministry had a pool, and Jesus didn't tell people who was affected by his ministry that they couldn't follow him because they were women. Jesus didn't tell the women in his ministry that they couldn't talk because they weren't men. I'm trying to help you update your theology. Jesus didn't degradate or look down on women. Actually, he lifted them up, encouraged them to do what they could do to help the ministry, and here we have a group of women who are following the master. And there's three things I want you to hear about these women, and I'm done. I already told you one, y'all. They were, they were faithful. Yeah. These women were faithful, y'all, because remember, it was dangerous for them to follow Christ. As a matter of fact, you'll find in some of the stories, the disciples got irritated because the, the women what was around. You know why? Because they wanted Jesus. Y'all don't know nobody like this. They wanted Jesus all to themselves. Come on. I, I know. Y'all know other people like this. Not you, but your neighbor. Uh, they don't like folk, and they don't want Jesus to like them. Lord, if I don't like them, I'm not praying for them. Lord, I don't want you to like them. I don't want you to heal them. I'm not going to pray for them because I don't like them, Jesus, and you're supposed to be my Jesus, right? You ain't supposed to like them either. Come on. We so clickish. We done ran up on Jesus with that closed-in bondage mindset. But Jesus said, my ministry is so powerful and has such a gravitational pull. Jesus said, I'm faithful to whoever's faithful. To me, these women were faithful, y'all, faithful in meeting the needs of the Lord and his party. Remember, it was at least 12 disciples. And these women was paying from pocket, providing substance necessary for Jesus to do ministry. Watch. They were faithful and stand with him even in danger, even amongst the threats and the people saying the rabbis don't hang out with women. The rabbis, the rabbis don't even like the women to talk. Jesus got these women with him, which makes him more of a target. But these women see, because when you in love with Jesus, you don't care who don't accept the fact that you in love with Jesus. Yeah. And no matter what title they don't give you, that won't care. I remember my grandmother, the late great Juanita Chandler Oliver, used to say, I will preach from the corner 
before I let a man disrespect me because I can't get behind the sacred death. And my grandmother would go from 32nd and Young all the way up to Shepherd Square Project preaching the uncompromising gospel truth for Jesus Christ. And she didn't care who didn't like it, who didn't. And I got preachers that come up to me today and they like, man, your grandmama was a bad. Because she didn't allow her gender or others' lack of understanding what God was doing in her life to stop her from being faith. And that's a word right there. If you don't hear nothing else, I say, quit looking for the acceptance of other people about what God is giving you. Walk faithfully in who God has called you to be. And I promise you, all I'm trying to hear him say is well done. Not how I did it. Not who was excited about how I did it. Not who came to see me do it. I just want to hear him say, well done, that good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher. Sharing your master's glory. That's all I'm looking for, y'all. Keep the titles, keep the name. I just want WD behind my name. Well, to come on, I don't want to be, come on, half baked. I don't want to be uh, cooked on the outside, not done on this. Well done. There, there's some stuff you can do down here. That can put you in position. Now listen, don't, don't get it twisted and turn your theology upside down. You can't do anything to get closer to God. I'm not faithful trying to get closer to God. <laughs> I'm faithful because he let me get close. And as a result of him knowing all that he knows about me and he's still madly in love with me, the least I can do. Show up ready to work. I'm here, Lord. <laughs> What you need me to do? I can't do that. That's all right. I'm going to try my best. Because all he wanted to know is all you. In fact, these women, these women was, was faithful, y'all. These women was faithful. And, watch this, they were grateful. Somebody say grateful. Ooh, we living in a time now where ungratefulness is in the drinks, ain't it? Ungratefulness is in the eye. You, just, you can just sniff it and become ungrateful because everybody's competing and comparing what they got with what the next person got, which makes you ungrateful. You ain't excited about what God is doing in your life. Why? Because you ain't stopped long enough to say thank you because you're wondering why God ain't doing that over here. So, so, so I think if I go over there, God will do it. God is like, no, nah, you, you're ungrateful. Because you're not grateful for what I'm doing, which says you really don't appreciate. Watch these women, though. These women are, are grateful. Yeah. Mary Magdalene, the Bible says she had seven demons. So, ooh, you know seven is a number for complete. That means she was completely ate up. Come on, and Mary ain't by herself. Some folks got seven demons. The worst possible state of demonic disorder you can come up with. And she finds herself after being delivered from the thing that ailed her, she doesn't just take God's blessing and go on about her business. She takes God's blessing and then she begins to serve in his ministry just to show him I'm grateful for the things that you have done. Yeah, yes, I'm grateful for the victory. Come on. We, I could go on and on and on. About his work because I'm grateful. Right. Flowing through y'all know this song. Help me, Hezekiah Walker. Flowing through my heart. Lord have mercy. Because gratefulness comes out of your pores. And when you grateful, whew, you have no problem letting folk know. And one of the ways is by being being faithful. Wow. Okay, so so Mary with the same demon, she was uh, completely ate up. Uh, she had seven demons, the Lord healed her. Watch. Then you had Joanna. Y'all see it's in verse 2, I think. Uh, Mary Magdalene, out of whom had seven demons. And then Joanna. It's amazing how they lifted up these, these women because it said there was many others who provided. But I think God was trying to show us something particular about these women. Not only can he heal you from wherever you came from. That's the first Mary Magdalene. He's saying, listen, you can't get no worse than sister girl. Yeah, she, she had all kind of stuff going on. And sometimes what stops us uh, from serving God is that we think we got <laughs> too much. Just, just, just sit back and think about how oxymoronic it is. You're talking to God and you tell him, when I get right, and, and, and God is like, you, you can't get right. I didn't make you right. 
And the reason you got issues, problems, infirmities, struggles is because you trying to get right. But, but if you would just lean and depend on me, if you would just drop all of your ways of doing things and trust me, God said, I can get you. I, okay, watch Joanna. Watch Joanna. She's the wife of chooser, y'all. He's Harris' manager, which means I did some linguistic analysis. He's Mary, uh, Harris' financial steward. So he's over Harris' money. Y'all know who Harris is, don't you? Harris is the one that tried to kill Jesus when he heard he was born. Y'all remember the three wise men? Herod told them, hey, when y'all find him, let me know. I won't come and worship him too. Now, Herod wanted to kill Jesus because Herod was so self-centered and self-absorbed that he didn't think there was room for two kings. And they was calling this new baby the king. Lord have mercy. So Herod wanted to kill. Listen, Herod died, but his son took on his spirit. So the Herods were, were not a person. It was a title like Pharaoh's. And they all was in contradistinction to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Watch the text. The Bible says, but Chooser's wife, Joanna, he worked for Herod, and he had access to Herod's finances. So, first of all, this represents the existence of Christian disciples among the aristocracy. So, listen, just because the leader is a fool, don't mean everybody working for him is a fool. Don't, 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 don't attribute all of what's going on to everybody because you think the leader speaks for the whole group. Here, it shows us. Uh, Chusa was blessing his wife. Come on, man. Everybody married. Uh, if your wife asks you for some money and you got it, here. So I'm pretty sure Joanna is married to Chusa and she's saying, baby, I need a couple of dollars. He, All right, honey, go on in the county and get it. And she's taking that money and she's going to support, God, this is tore up a lot of houses when one tithe and the other one don't. Uh, and she, she's taking money out of the pot and she's giving it to this Jesus fellow. Lord have mercy. Uh, because Chooser's wife, Joanna, understood that this man and his ministry is real. And even... If I got to put what we got going on at risk, I'm going to support, watch this, y'all. I'm going to help him do privately what I can't do publicly. One more time. I'm going to give him privately so that he can do what I can't do public. Lord, him. one more time. I'm going to give to him because I believe in what God is doing through him and he's able to do something I can't do. So because I can't do what he can do, I can support him with what I can. Am I helping anybody? I'm going to give privately because publicly I want the blessings. Lord, have mercy. So Susan, Joanna done got the money <laughs> and put it in the church. Lord, Joanna done got the money out. She thought she, he thought she was getting some shoes. And Joanna was blessing. He thought Joanna was getting her nails and her hair did, but she was being a blessing. Because when you're grateful, there's some sacrifice that goes along with it. And listen, I can't receive all this grace and not be willing to give anything. Ooh, get all you can, can all you get, and set on your can. We building bigger barns instead of blessing folks with the overflow. Why? Because we got a habit of not wanting to give all we want to do. Come on, we found the scripture. It's better to give than it is to receive, but... Don't turn down your blessing. If somebody wants to give, yeah, won't you give it because you don't need it. If they give it to you, God bless you, and you turn around. It's okay. It's for you to take it and then turn around and be a blessing. But we take it, and we get all we can, can all we get, and then we set on. Set on. So jo Joanna was blessing the ministry even though so, in other words, uh, I tell you all this time, all the time, uh, God is able to take the devil's oven and bake his bread in it. Because you don't understand, God runs everything. So, if the devil is busy, 
You know how we like to say, the devil's busy. Okay, let's just say he is busy. He had to get permission to get busy. And it just may be that God's trying to get you to fall out with the devil is why he done got busy. Because <laughs> God's strategic in trying to find ways to force us back to his loving Okay, it's the last. Uh, Mary, she had the demons. She was in the worst possible state, demonic disorder. Joanna, good solid chick. She was, she, was just, she was just trying to be a blessing. She was just trying to, you know, trying to make sure the ministry. Had what, it was a lot of people. They needed room and shelter and food. So Susanna had means. I mean, Joanna had means that she could be a blessing. And then look at this little unsuspecting sister in the back of the text. It says, and Susanna. Don't tell you nothing about it. Y'all see? I mean, it told you what happened to Mary. She had the demons. It told you what happened to Joanna. She, she, was, she was faithful because of, of she had the substance, but she didn't allow uh, her husband's job to make her fall out with Christ. So she took to give. But then it just says something strange. It said, and, and Susanna. Susanna represents the servant who privately blesses God. Come on, I know when I was growing up in the old church, you know, you had the mothers. You know, my mother and them didn't have a lot. Mother and them didn't have a blessed that whole. But they did more with what they had, and they had less than what we got. And somehow we find a way to struggle. But mother and them would walk up on you, grab you by the hand. And they have that five, ten dollar bill wrapped up so tight, you wouldn't know what it was. And they tell you, now go on. Don't open it until you get away. Go on. They, they walk up on you and just put it right in your hand because they was privately sowing into your life. Sowing. Mother and them say, I ain't got it all, but I'll give you something on it. See, Susanna represents the, the, the kind of servant that, that don't need no title. She don't need her business. Put it, come on, Susanna's the kind that'll help somebody make ends meet and then sit back and smile as they are grateful, but she don't want no, no, no. Any, any Susannas in the house that, that don't mind blessing God without needing uh, your light name in lights, without needing or your name on the roll. Come on, the person who gives and don't even write their name on the envelope. You don't know where it came from, but, but Susanna reminds us, y'all, that when you are in love with God and when you really Really have a heart to see his ministry do for others what it has done for you then whenever you get the opportunity you don't mind sowing into God now listen let's go back to the top because I don't want you to think pastor is after your little money I'm not just talking about your time I mean your your treasure I'm talking about your time I'm talking about your talent because whenever God wants to use us he has a multiplicity of ways that he wants to use us and oftentimes we ain't all the way disobedient. We're just partially obedient, which means, God, you can use this part of my life, but don't bother me over here. God, you can, you come on, we portion off our life to God, and we say, God, you can have me in this area, but don't you use me in that arena. Why? Because I'm uncomfortable over there. I, I don't know what I'm doing over there. And God said, that's all the more why I want to use you, because I want to stretch your faith and stretch your possibilities. You got all all of this potential and all of these things that I would love to do through you. Watch this. But because you haven't fallen in love, these women were generous givers. That meant they made sure Jesus had what he needed. This is an example of how some women of means use their wealth to benefit the work of God. They didn't mind. Blessing God. They, 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 they. Susanna said, I don't even need no title. I don't even need y'all to know who I am. I just want to be found faithful, grateful, and generous. God is looking for people whom he can show himself strong in, but he has to believe that we're going to be faithful in what he's trying to do. Through us. We're going to be faithful to the point that we get what we pray for and then don't switch up on God. Come on, ain't that what the kids say? Uh, you switched up on me. Yeah, because when you didn't have nothing, I couldn't get rid of you. <laughs> and then you got a little something. And I always get voicemail. 
you don't return my text no more. You don't. Now, come on, can you imagine how God feels? He's like, wow, I remember when you was down and out. Didn't have a dime. But I stepped in right on time. And now that I've blessed you, picked you up, turned you around, placed your feet on solid ground, now you're not walking to me anymore. Now you're walking away from I got to chase you down and remind you that God is still on the throne. Their hearts were sensitive to God's work, and they expressed their sensitivity through their generosity. So listen, I'm done. People don't, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. God don't want to hear what you're going to do. He want to see you're doing in action. Because it's easy to promise something in a moment. And we have, this, we have found it very convenient to say I will, but then after the moment in which we said I will is long past, Amnesia creeps in. And, 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 and whenever you are an ambassador for God, whenever you're an exchange agent for God, the Bible says, um, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth. That will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let me go back. I missed it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There it is. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Thy kingdom come. God's desire is for his ministry to not remain heavenly but to become earthly. In order to get his ministry from the heavenly realm into the earthen realm, when he says, thy kingdom come, in order for thy kingdom to come, there has to be some citizens, some kingdom citizens, some exchange agents that can help transfer the kingdom that's coming into the earth. Because you know, like I know, God has no anthropomorphic qualities. <laughs> Pastor, what was that? He has no hands. God has no feet. He, he, he has no anthropomorphic pomorphic qualities, which means we are God's hands. We are are God's feet. We are God's voice. And in order for God to feel comfortable continuously pouring into us. Because remember, he's trying to get his kingdom to come. And he's looking for vessels that he can pour into Oh, they said one of the reasons the Dead Sea was called the Dead Sea <laughs> is because it had no outlet. Okay, let me go another way. Uh, everything that went in the sea stayed in the sea. It had no, no outlet. And I don't know where y'all grew up at, but it's a park in the West End. I leave it named, nameless to protect the innocent. But it's some it's some water down there. It don't go nowhere. I don't know how it refills. I don't know how it don't uh, evaporate under the sun. But somehow, this little park got this little pond with these little ducks in it. And if you go back there on the right day, that water look corroded. It, 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 looks, it looks like there's no life in it. And when I start thinking, I said, wow, that thing can't flushing or nothing. And anything that constantly gets poured into that doesn't have an outlet, it's stagnant, stale. God is calling for us to be conduits 
not cisterns. Cisterns is where water goes to gather. And the water that goes in her stays in her. And after a while, that water ain't fit for nothing but staying in that well. Well, the cisterns constantly have a flowing and flushing process, which means when stuff comes in, there's an outlet for it to go out, which keeps the cistern fresh. And a lot of us are, we corroded because we ain't got no, no outlet. Well, what if the Lord, what if the Lord built the body and then give us an outlet? Everything we ate, use your imagination, stayed in. Everything we drunk, stay. How unhealthy. One thing the doctor tells you, in order to keep your kidneys strong, you got to flush them. God's system that he has set the Christian under is designed to keep us healthy because when he pours in, and y'all know he don't have no problem pouring in, but we have a problem because we think it's ours. That's why, that's why, listen, let me help somebody. That's why uh, when, when people in our life, we lose people in our life, some people don't recover. You know why? They have no outlet. What's that got to do with it, Pastor? They don't know how to release. And when you don't know how to release, you hold on to stuff and you bound up and you mad and you angry and you missing out on all of the grace and mercy that God has given us simply because you don't have an outlet, which means you become selfish. You think everything that you ever had still should be yours. God is saying, I'm trying to teach you how to your problem ain't that you don't have. Your problem is you don't know how to give. When I give you a seed, you don't plant it, you eat it. <laughs> and whenever you plant a seed, you don't know how much fruit is going to come out of that seed. But when you have a habit of eating it, you miss an opportunity to let it flush every head bowed every eye closed Lord God we thank you for your word that's designed to strengthen us some mirror so that we can look in it and see us God help us to see those things that you want us to intentionally see and then give us the strength to deal with it so that it doesn't become a long-term issue. God, we thank you for these women. And these women model the women of all time. Giving, supporting, loving, even in the midst of a society that don't always accept them. Don't want to give them equal pay. Don't want to give them equal rights. Don't want to equally acknowledge their contribution. God, we thank you for lifting up these women and showing us that they are important, impactful to the culture. And God, help us to mimic and model the expectation. Help us model these women. We'll be faithful. We'll remain grateful. That we'll be generous. Because we've received so much, we now want to be conduits of giving. Thank you for this time, oh God. Strengthen us. Help us, oh God, as we strive to become more like you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, y'all. Let's stand to our feet. Let's make this place ready for those who may not know Jesus in the free part of their sin. May have a decision to make. Uh, thinking about coming to Christ. Um, today can be the rest, best day to the rest of your life. If you would just trust him.
right where you at, right who, who you are right now is good enough for God. Don't try to fix not one thing to impress those around you. Just give him your heart. So we're going to give you a few seconds to think about it. If you don't know Jesus in the free, free part of your sin, we offer you the opportunity to come. Give your hand and your heart to God if you're watching via live stream. Send us a comment. Send us an email. Amen. Call us. Leave us a voicemail. However you may feel led. But whatever you do, give your life to Christ today. Tomorrow's a promissory note. Yesterday ain't nothing but a cancel check. Today is the only redeemable time that we have. If that's you, we want to offer you that opportunity right now. Would you come?
We bless the Lord. We are grateful for all the things that he has done. Amen. Perhaps you solicited your information on um, Facebook. We will be in contact with you and return to touch and help you become all that God has called you to be. Amen. At this time, uh, don't forget, if you'd like to partner with us, help us continue to forward this gospel. We have offering opportunity for you to give electronically. If you're not here in person, amen, you can give by GiveLify Cash App or our mailing system. Don't forget um, our building fund as well as our missions and mercies. And for those members, amen, we're still asking that everyone will continuously try to help us reach the mark, amen, by sowing your seed, amen, your seed offering acts of all of our adult members for $500. Please, ma'am, please, sir, take an opportunity to sow in the good ground, and I promise you the reward or the return on your investment will be well worth your sacrifice. Don't forget our prayer call every Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening at 8. There's the call, call in number. You don't have to be a member to call. We invite all the call in. We solicit all of your prayers for all of our sick and our shut in. Amen. It's got a note to pray. Amen. Someone just recently uh, lost their grandmother. Amen. Tiaka. Amen. So we're going to pray. Amen. Ask them the Lord's healing hand and comfort to cover you in this time, Miss Tiaka. We just trust God. We know that he don't make mistakes and it's it's going to hurt. It's supposed to hurt. But just know that earth has no sorrow. The heaven, heaven cannot heal. So we're going to pray for you and your family, as well as uh, Sister Tiffany, uh, her sisters, uh, dealing with her father, I mean, her stepfather's um, health issue as well, health crisis. So just continue, y'all, to stay vigilant in prayer. We know death is something we never, ever um, like, or it's not easily understood and everybody heals differently but just trust God at the end of the day find it in your heart to trust and believe God for he will not put no more on us than we can bear and that's one of the heaviest loads we can all bear is death so we'll keep Miss Tiaka's family as well as Miss Tiffany's family and all of those sick and shut in prayer listers um, continue to keep them lifted in your prayers as well uh, all hearts and minds are clear. Uh, don't forget our verse of the week. James 4 and 7. It says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's one of those verses that's it's got a promise stuck in there. We rush to the end and we forget the first part. The A clause says, submit to God. And once you submit to him, when you begin to resist the devil, he has to flee because you submitted to the highest power. And though the devil looks like he's got some power, he's a dog on a choke chain. He can only do what our strong God allows him to do. So come on, we're gonna pray, don't forget. Your payment is due for the uh, summer trip. Asking everyone to please finish making payment by Sunday. Amen. So that your spot can be secured. So that you can take the spring break trip with the youth department. Amen. And don't forget as our prayer list grows across, <clears throat> keep those lifted in your prayers. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear gracious God, our Father, God, we come to you right now, God, asking that you would hold our family members in your arms, those who have lost loved ones just on tonight. God, we ask that you would strengthen Tiaka and Rhonda and the family as they um, make peace with what you've allowed. God, we ask that you would comfort them in the hollow of your hand, keep them close to your heart, let them know, O oh God, that they are not alone. You said in your word, you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we're asking that you would cover them, bring the family together, God, as they make final arrangements for the resting of the matriarch of the family. 
Just asking that you would cover them, give them traveling grace if they have to travel. Cover them and keep them, oh God, and bring them safely home in good spirits. God, we asking that you would touch uh, Denise's family right now, Father God, as you strengthen her mom and her brothers and sisters as they um, are in a helpless position, God, as they're having to watch a loved one suffer. So God, we're just asking that you would strengthen their resolve. Keep them. Let them remember the good times, oh God, and not dwell on that which cannot be adjusted. So we're asking that you would give them peace, that you would give them closure, that you would give them strength necessary. Continue to come together as a family and to continue to pour out the love needed in times like like these. Father God, we lift up all of our brothers and sisters to you, those that are on the prayer line, those that ask for prayer for family members and friends on the prayer line. God, you know all things. And long before we ask you, you already know what we stand in the need of. The Bible says you know the hairs on our head and you've even counted them. So you're that intimately in love with us that you know all things about us. So we lift up all of our family, friends, prayer listers, community, congregation, the people in Ukraine that's being devastated. God, touch the heart of the Russian leader. He will relent, oh God, that he would relent and pull back, Father God. And ask that you would just continue to bless our world, continue to bless all our city, state, county officials, all our first responders, medical field, all of those, oh God, who continuously put themselves in harm's way for our safety as well as our freedoms. Lord, as we depart from this place, but never your presence, we need your traveling grace to help us make it safely to our homes to find them the same way we left them. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for you alone are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, family. Have a blessed week. We'll see y'all on Sunday.